I'm Craig Lang, president of the Iowa Farm Bureau. We are the state's largest farm organization, uh, but we're not just farmers. Uh, we are made up of, of members that uh, are farm supporting. Uh, we basically deal with policies that are important to our membership, uh, which includes all policies from agriculture to education to community development. I think in the future, Iowa's going to need a, a number of individuals that are trained in unique uh, uh, jobs. Uh, first of all, let's talk about agriculture, because agriculture is changing. Uh, the bioeconomy is going to drive agriculture in the future. Uh, we're going to need individuals that are skilled in several things. First of all, in sciences. Uh, they're going to need to have a, a vast understanding in human relations, too, because in the past, uh, farmers have uh, normally employed maybe one or two people, and that's probably family members. But in the future, uh, as uh, farming becomes more competitive, uh, as the job skills become uh, larger and, uh, uh, let's say, uh, more difficult, uh, farmers are going to have to be trained in human relations uh, and, and how to work with people. So it's going to take a, an effort on the part of the universities and the school systems to understand what kind of uh, individuals needed in the future. But it's just, just not about uh, farming and farming communities. It's also about uh, that farming community. Uh, today you'll find that many communities don't have skilled laborers. Uh, I'm talking about people that are important to the community like plumbers and electricians and welders, those kind of individuals that today uh, the small community may have to reach a hundred miles away and I think uh, because of the growth of the economies uh, around agriculture every community is going to need that kind of individual. Iowa's impact in the world is huge. Today we're known as the food basket of the world. Uh, Iowa will want to be in a position where they step forward to provide food for a growing world population. So that means that in the future, uh, Iowa is going to have to focus on net calories of production per acre, uh, rather than bushels. We're not talking net calories, meaning resources in, resources out. We'll want to make sure we weigh that appropriately. Iowa will also be asked to provide um, education uh, so that those people in parts of the world uh, that have resources, that underutilize their resources, will know how to use the resources in, in, a, uh, negative, in a positive calorie way. Uh, so Iowa's uh, reach to the world uh, today is enormous. It's even going to be larger because we are a net exporter of almost everything we grow in Iowa. Uh, that will become even larger and it'll be around uh, food, uh, it'll be around energy, uh, and it'll be around um, people resources. Um, I, th I think that's an interesting question. Uh, it may be that education is going to have to be provided in a different way. Uh, one of the things that, that I have seen is that uh, from a competitive perspective, students in, in rural Iowa's or inner schools today are not being provided with the same kind of resource that, say, maybe a tax-rich community is. So uh, one of the things that I found was very interesting is how do you provide uh, that physics course uh, that, uh, or even a basic math course to an elementary uh, level uh, in those schools uh, that they don't have today. For instance, it's not fair to the students to be provided uh, with a physical education teacher that has no background in math to fill the role of a math teacher that moves away. So we're going to have to collaborate in a different way than we have before. When I sat on the Grow Values Fund Board and the IDD Board, we talked about coordinating economic development with education. For instance, if we were to work on a grant, say at a uh, interstate location uh, that was by Grinnell College, uh, and and they wanted to provide uh, a uh, let's say a, a economic development project, we thought within that there ought to be a classroom that was internet or or fiber connected, so that a student close by could come there to a physics class they couldn't get locally, or that a large school that had 
uh, extra teachers might loan those teachers out for a while so so the students uh, got the the sciences and the maths and things that they should have that they couldn't get otherwise uh, and but it didn't mean that we that we saved every school uh, in some cases it meant that the elementary school stayed but maybe the high school moved somewhere else along the way we just have to think differently about the way we provide that because we, we want to be on the cutting edge of education in the world and we can't do that under the, the scenario we have today. And, and part of the reason is because there are less resources today to spread over more people so we have to figure out a way to provide uh, a, a better opportunity for the students than we have in the past. And what we've done in the past is not necessarily going to equip us to be prepared for the future.